This week, the hotel inspector storms a castle. If this was my hotel, I promise you I would have a nervous breakdown. The hotel is understaffed. We don't have a waitress. And unloved. This hotel and this castle will not survive unless it is a fundamental part of the community. Can Alex Polizzi win the Battle of Brecon? But really, it's just like putting a cherry on a turd. The Castle of Brecon Hotel is one of the oldest landmarks in Wales. But this grand old lady is in trouble. High-flying solicitor Leon Rizzi and his wife Natasha, a Russian construction entrepreneur, bought the hotel just 18 months ago. But they've been hemorrhaging money since day one due to decades of previous neglect, both to the building and to the business. Well, every month, let's say, that passes, we're losing between 30 and 40,000 pounds. With no previous experience, Natasha and Leon jumped headfirst into the hotel trade, assuming that they could transfer their combined skills into running this 43-bedroomed hotel. We came here and we, we not only had to learn about a hotel, but we had to learn about things like taxes, VAT. And it's just been a minefield, minefield, minefield. Having moved their family from Russia and spent 1.2 million pounds buying the castle, the Ritzis have taken an enormous risk. We called um, an agent who deals with hotels and we said, look, we're thinking of buying this place. And he said, no, don't buy it. It's a well-known white elephant in the industry. <laughs> it's gone bust four times to my knowledge and don't buy it. Ignoring the warnings, the couple are now paying the price. The business is running us, definitely. Because if you don't work, everything will be collapsing and everything will be gone. We'll lose absolutely everything. Natasha and Leon are struggling to cope. The hotel has a pitiful 25% occupancy rate. They're running out of money and they've received a barrage of terrible comments from guests. Whenever we see the reviews and some of them are so hurtful nasty, yeah. and nasty, it is just like putting a knife and sticking it in my heart. I read them and I just want to cry and give up and walk away and say, you win, you win, enough. Their knight in shining armor is Alex Polizzi. Born into the 40 hotel dynasty, Alex has run some of the most successful hotels in the world, including Hotel Emsley in Devon, recently voted best UK rural retreat. As one of the most respected hoteliers in Britain, what will Alex make of the down-at-heel Castle of Brecon Hotel? And it was fairly impressive from this side of the river, but I've been told that with fewer and fewer customers and a local community that doesn't support its current owners, those ancient walls face an uncertain future. And as Alex arrives, she's greeted by a depressing exterior. With trailing wires, a dirty ashtray and wilted flowers, what sort of welcome awaits the hotel inspector inside? Hello there. Hi, I'm Alex Polizzi. Hello, Hello there. Leon. Yes. Nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you as well. <laughs> Natasha, come on round. Hi, Hi Natasha. Hello. I'm Alex. Nice, nice, nice to meet you. At last. Oh, one moment. Castle Phil. Did you, uh, did you get the prices? Did, uh, First impressions really count, and Natasha's obvious confusion does little to Hello. impress Alex. Hello there, it's Leon Reese speaking. Leon's sales yes, patter exactly. doesn't appear to bode well bad. either. Um, it's obviously our budget rooms, uh, as long as you're aware of that, as in that we, we haven't got round to, to actually refurbishing them yet, so... OK, thanks now then. Bye-bye. Alex is surprised that in a hotel of this size, she finds the owners manning reception. The lack of staff may go some way to explaining why the castle has recently been reviewed on TripAdvisor as more like a hostel than a hotel. Despite pouring time and money into their business, Natasha and Leon haven't escaped the bad reviews either. They've been described as having a woefully couldn't care less attitude. Clearly, the hotel inspector has much to do. 
So you saw this place, you had a moment of madness, you saw Certainly it on a beautiful did. sunny day. Yes. How did it work? We went into this with our eyes sort of open. We knew that we <laughs> didn't know the slightest thing about the business, yeah. but we managed to pick it up fast. And I had no illusions that this was a, a business in possibly terminal uh, decline. From what I understand, you are in a little bit of financial shit, if it's not impolite for me to say. Hey! <laughs> and, and I just want to hear your analysis of where you think up till now you might have gone wrong. We thought that we could possibly turn it around because the manager that had been in position before, she continued to be the manager after we purchased. So you wanted to keep a management team even though it was a failing hotel? But Natasha and Leon's troubles didn't end there. The experienced manager left shortly after the Ritzis took over, and despite offering top wages, they've struggled to hold on to employees ever since. So how many staff did you inherit? Up to 20 with part-time. And how many of those original ones do you have left? One. <laughs> no, wait, wait. We're and supposed to have had a reception start three days 16. ago and hasn't turned up, hasn't called. Um, we're supposed to have had a, a manager turn up that lasted two days and said she couldn't, she didn't want to yeah. work here anymore after two days. It's just unbelievable. People work for two weeks and we go. They just don't stay. I, I don't know why. It's, this is a puzzle to me. I don't understand. And we We've give them a the with the salary lunch. they want. But that's a mistake. You've got to be tough initially, because there's no point in being tough afterwards. You're tough when you, they start, because the moment that staff sent blood, you're dead in the water. But, you're shark bait. But, mm. You're the managers. Okay, we Start are the thinking managers. like that. No right. one's going to help you out of this shit. You have to help yourselves. Natasha and Leon Rizzi have owned the Castle of Brecon Hotel for just 18 months, but it's proven to be a money pit, and they're now on the verge of being buried in it. You can't go on like this. You can't run a business that loses money. You just can't do that. You've got to, at a certain point, say enough is enough is enough. In the 1960s, the castle was a distinguished hotel and a source of local pride. Brecon residents would book the ballroom for their weddings and celebrate special nights in the restaurant. But now, the failing business has lost its appeal. The service has got a little bit to be desired, and attitude, big problem with their attitude. It lacked love, really, and uh, not up to my expectations whatsoever. It should be a showcase for Brecon and for the town as well. It's kind of dropped off the face of the earth for 30 years. People don't know it. It exists even. This hotel and this castle will not survive unless it is a fundamental part of the community. Renowned hotelier Alex Palizzi has been brought in to restore the castle's reputation and its faded grandeur. Prior to the Ritzis, the hotel's decor had been ignored for decades. After developing properties in Moscow, Natasha is planning on bringing a touch of Russian elegance to the castle's interiors. So far, she's sunk £200,000 on refurbishments, including a revamp of the public areas in an attempt to lure back the locals. Wow. This is a completely different hotel from the one that I walked into. But look at this lovely Russian influence. It's a gorgeous room. I love it. But it's bedrooms, not ballrooms, that hold the all-important answer for the Ritzis. To turn their fortunes around, they must pin their hopes on filling the hotel's 43 bedrooms and improving their worryingly low 25% occupancy rate. So far, only two rooms have been refurbished and, keen to impress, Natasha has booked the hotel inspector into her personal favourite. But will Alex be impressed with either the lavish decor or the new look's £8,000 price tag? Right, so first impressions are it's all a bit overblown. Um, I mean, there's a lot of fabric and a lot of stuff in this room. It's not that big a room, and it's making me feel slightly claustrophobic even. I noticed that that light's not on. I don't know if it's working. 
No, it's not. This is one of my complete hates. The idea that this is a bedspread that you can't wash and in a colour that's going to mark straight away. It just doesn't make any kind of sense to me. She spent a lot of money that she didn't necessarily need to spend on a room that she could have made a lot simpler. By decorating purely to her own tastes, Natasha has created a room that's neither practical for a hotel nor sensible for a business that's failing to turn a profit. Alex's next stop is one of the hotel's unrefurbished rooms. Well, the wallpaper's coming off the walls, it's cracked everywhere, the headboard is filthy, the furniture is not just old, but mismatched. Well, I mean, Natasha has admitted that they all need a certain amount of tidying up, but that's more tidying up than I would expect. And there's no new roll holder. This is a dirty bathroom. Oh, my God. Look at this soap dish. It is absolutely filthy, and there's a pubic hair underneath it. I would be livid if I came in here and I found the bathroom like this in a £75 a night room. I would go and I would throw that soap dish at the reception. I'm repulsed. I came prepared. I've stayed in enough let's say, less than satisfactory establishment. So the first thing I'm going to try and tackle is that light. It's just as well that wherever Alex goes, her bag of tricks goes too. And after seeing next door's dirty bathroom, she isn't taking any chances. It's better. If only she'd thought to pack her own bed linen. I have just pulled back the bed cover to see that there's no duvet cover on the bed which I'm so not amused by. They knew I was coming to stay. They know what I do. Do you not think that they might have come and checked the room that I was going to stay in? I certainly would have done. You know, bring it on. Be as critical as possible. Pull this place to pieces. Smash us up. Say everything you can about us. Probably didn't realize that we've been... Yeah. I, I don't know, just stupid, probably. But hopefully that's the end of it, and now we are going to become clever. Yeah, and I... follow professional advice. <laughs> the following morning, Alex wakes in a frosty frame of mind. I didn't sleep very well last night. There is not a proper size undersheet on the bed, and that means it all rocked up underneath me. I've been awake since 4 o'clock in the morning, and I'm not in a very good mood. Based on her first visit, Alex can understand why the castle is inviting damning reviews. By their own admission, the couple know little about hotel management. And although Natasha has spent £200,000 on the first phase of a revamp, 41 rooms remain in dire need of attention and are ruining any hope of repeat business. Hello, it's uh, Leon here. I was just wondering if you were coming into work today. You know, we could really do with some help on reception because um, no one else has turned up at the moment. Thanks, now. Bye bye. Good morning, Leon. Good morning. How are you? Tired. <laughs> Still here. You look it. Yes. Everything okay today? Any disasters happened in the last 12 hours? Uh, um, we're still wondering where our receptionist is. So it to. seems we've proved once again that staffing is a, one of the really big issues. Yes. Yeah. Because also, is Natasha on her own in the kitchen? Yes, and she's serving. You don't have a waitress? No. Natasha's doing front of house and cooking the food, and I'm doing reception and answering the telephones and... Uh, Housekeepers this morning, how many do you have on? One. How many rooms did you have sold last night? Um, 11, 12, 13 rooms. Well, you're expecting one housekeeper to turn over 13 rooms. And, and she does, yeah. The hotel is so desperately short of staff that Natasha has been up since 5.30 a.m. Full Welsh. Thank you, Natasha. Cook by your She's single-handedly cooked and served breakfast for all the castle's 23 guests. Natasha, 
Breakfast is perfectly cooked, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. At least something we are doing right. Your biggest problem is definitely getting some staff, isn't it? I mean, you look really on the verge of... You, I'm, I'm really worried about you because you look... I feel... Honestly, I feel like giving you a hug. I think, you know, it must be yeah. a nightmare. It is. I'm just genuinely frustrated and tired. I can't blame you because you're in here and you can't divide yourself in two. But we need to find some staff for you because I feel yeah. like you're really stuck at the moment. I am, yeah. OK. Can I give you a hand clearing up or something? Yeah, that's give fine, me a yeah. Give me a here cloth. Are. Here give we me go. a cloth and I'm yours. <laughs> The kitchen grime is just another item on the castle's ever-lengthening list of problems to address. And it'll take more than Alex's elbow grease to solve all of them. That's fantastic. Would you like a job? Oh, darling, if it's all I can do is help you with the cleaning, that I can certainly oh, do. Oh, thank you very much. I didn't expect it at all. It's really good. Thank <laughs> Not you. At all, thank you. To fully understand the extent of the staffing problem, Alex has requested all of the hotel staff to meet her on the lawn. Hi. A new receptionist. Lovely to meet yeah. you, Rachel. Hi, Dilly. Head housekeeper. Very nice to meet you, Dilly. Hi. The assembled team make up one third of the number Alex would expect from a hotel of this size. Indisputable proof that Natasha and Leon are running a hotel with a skeleton crew. How many rooms is each person expected to clean in a day? They work in pairs and they clean all of them. 43 rooms. There's not enough staff. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really hoping that I'm going to open their eyes to what it takes to own a hotel. You know, because, I mean, with respect, I mean, having never been in the trade before, it's not the easiest one to learn, because there's so many different aspects. It's a, it's a steep learning curve, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> Someone's got to take responsibility. Mm. Yeah. And ultimately, it's Natasha and Leon. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Alex is aware that no-one here can rely on luck alone. Solid business sense and strong leadership are vital. So she goes in search of the management. The first and, I think, most important thing is that I don't quite know who's directing your staff. I'm almost sure, you know, the, the, the blame is with us. We can't be there all the time. And whenever we've delegated that to somebody I else, I know, Leon, it's, but I've been here two days and yeah. I've never seen anybody wipe a table. Yeah. And I think that that's already a kind of slightly a sign of a failing hotel because you mm -hmm. don't want people to come in and think that you're not on top of something so basic. Possibly the housekeeping should start the day off by cleaning this place top to bottom. Well, at night. we've got one housekeeper to do 13 yeah. rooms. I think she's got her job pretty occupied. Yeah. I mean, none of this is rocket science, no. though. While Leon tries to stretch the staff, Natasha overextends herself as the castle's self appointed makeover manager. Alex dismissed room 19's refurbishment as overblown and a waste of money. So, what will she make of room 53? Can I understand something? You're planning on doing every room differently. Yes. Which is something that very few hoteliers uh, do, I hasten to add. So I'm just interested in why you think that this is a good idea. Um, because we are doing them slowly. No, but it's just so much easier to template. You get something right and then you repeat it in a room. Otherwise, you have to buy furniture in every room and you make mistakes in every room. Mm -hmm. Natasha has spent an astonishing £8,000 refurbishing a room that's priced at £150 a night. If she continues at this rate, the remaining 41 bedrooms will cost the couple over £300,000 to refurbish, money they won't earn back in a hurry. This kind of stuff, which is just decoration, is yeah. completely pointless. This is not a bedside light, Natasha, I'm sorry. Uh, trying to read by that would be pretty bloody difficult. Yeah? Mm. In my opinion, you never put anything little like this. If you want something, you put something big, or you put lots of little things all together. It's a rule. I'm telling you, I promise you, mm -hmm. it's the law. I'm only saying this to you because this is your new room and yeah. this should be your pride and joy and I cannot understand your ethos. I think that's the problem because, I'm sorry Natasha, to me it's like you've got a frustrated urge to do up a house. 
This isn't your house. This is supposed to be a business and you have to make it work. This carpet is going to be filthy in two and a half seconds. It's obvious to Alex that Natasha's flamboyance and lack of discipline could be key factors in the castle's financial failure. With her first visit almost over, it's time for Alex to deliver her verdict on the business and its owners. Natasha, Leon, there's a few things that I still haven't discussed with you that I would like to talk over before I leave. Cleanliness certainly is something that is an issue in all aspects of the hotel. Now, in the room next door, room 18, which I know you're selling for £75 a night for a double, the loo seat isn't attached. And I have to say, it's one of the dirtiest bathrooms I've been in in my, in my whole hoteling life. You know, it should feel like no one's ever sat on that loose seat ever. before. Yeah, yeah. Ever. Yeah. Ever. If I had been asked to pay £75, I would not only have thrown one of the dirty soap dishes in your face, mm. but I would have walked out the door never to be seen again. Yeah. Next on her hit list, the all-important bedrooms, and more specifically, Natasha's wasteful and impractical makeovers. I think you would be spending your money a lot better, spending much smaller sums on doing some vital upgrading, but much more basic on a lot of the bedrooms. Think minimal and then see how far it takes you. Alex's final point, the castle's ever-decreasing numbers of key staff. You're not that busy now and you're running on what I would call a skeleton staff. One way or another, you have to turn around the kind of... Yeah. The, the slow drip drip of losing people and having some really enthusiastic, mm -hmm. reliable, responsible, dedicated people because this is a lovely place to work. Oh, thanks. <laughs> My pleasure. Alex leaves the Ritzies with three clear areas to work on before her return. And concerned by the issue of hygiene, the couple head for room 18 to investigate the scene of the grime themselves. Yeah, and I can see straight away that's why probably the spot checks would be very useful for us because I can see straight away what she was talking about. It's the soap dish, it's the stains on in the bath, mm -hmm. and I mean generally yeah, the... Yeah, look at that. I mean, that's, that's terrible. And uh, get, uh, get the housekeeping to, to clean it better. So we have plenty to do before uh, the next visit. Mm -hmm. of a hotel inspector and we'll try to achieve maximum so she's impressed when she comes back. Yeah, we'll try our best. Yeah. The castle of Brecon is in free fall. The hotel is unclean. It is absolutely filthy and there's a pubic hair underneath it. Understaffed. People work for two weeks and they go. They just don't stay. And seriously underperforming. Every month, let's say, that passes, we're losing between 30 and 40,000 pounds. Natasha and Leon Rizzi have alienated the local community and desperately need to get them back on side. This hotel and this castle will not survive unless it is a fundamental part of the community. But before Alex reveals her plan to lure the locals back inside the castle walls, she has to be sure the hotel has something to offer that will keep them there. Ah, Monsieur, hello. hello. How are you? Very good, thank you. Very You're good. looking very managerial. Thank you. What's the biggest change since I was last here all those weeks ago? Hygiene in the in the bedrooms was number one. I was I was quite horrified because I did actually go up and I, you know I was picking up toilet brushes and finding that people had been in the room before. So that that's hopefully gone. Leon seems confident he's addressed quality control, but there are other concerns. Alex asked Natasha to keep her refurbishment ideas simple, affordable and repeatable. But has she embraced the less is more approach? What is the plan for in here? I don't know, I didn't decide yet. All right, Natasha. <laughs> Basically here, the major part of design will be a glass wall, curved glass wall. It won't be made from glass, it will be, you know, the bricks uh, glass bricks, so this would be the bathroom. And, well, that's uh, good, because I don't know about you, maybe you have a different relationship with your husband, but I prefer mine not to see me on the loo. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't believe you haven't planned out the room. How do you know I whether was... the radiators are in the right Yeah, exactly, place? yes. I was here thinking, and I actually 
didn't achieve much. I don't know where to put the bed. I was thinking to put the round bed in the middle. I got that touch. <laughs> but it's very expensive beds. Yeah, don't round, do it. Round, don't do expensive. it. Control so. yourself. <laughs> don't do it. Despite Natasha agreeing to tone down her outlandish designs, she hasn't. Understandably, Alex is concerned that yet more flights of fancy await her in the other bedrooms underway. Where are you putting beds? I, I don't know. This is actually... And uh, Alex begins to doubt whether any of her advice is being followed. I'm feeling quite frustrated at this point because I feel like I'm being fed a line of bullshit. They say that everything's much better. They say that they've learned from what I told them before, and I see no evidence of that. I have never seen such chaos over a refurb as I did in that room. Who's running these builders? Who's ever heard of ripping out a room and throwing to tile a bathroom without deciding where things are gonna go? I feel like Natasha and Leon are fiddling while Rome burns. They haven't learned anything. They still don't know what it is to be a good manager. And I don't think they really care. And that really offends me, because I think this hotel deserves better than them. Now, they assured me that they were horrified, shocked at how bad things would get, and that they were going to rectify it all. So, seeing as I don't bloody believe them, I've come prepared this time. I'm not doing it without the gloves. <laughs> they still haven't fixed this bloody loose seat. Um, the worst of it is, is I should be surprised, but I'm not. <sighs> Clearly no one's ever heard of how to clean with a toothbrush, but that isn't what I'm worried about. <gasps> it is there! It's still there. That pubic hair is symbolic of everything that is wrong with Natasha and Leon as managers of this hotel. That is their responsibility. To drive home how Natasha and Leon must take responsibility for setting standards, Alex calls a meeting to set the ground rules and stage an experiment. I think housekeeping is this huge unknown, yes, unknown. area yeah. at the it's moment. Touched, yeah. It's unknown area, yes. You I'll know, darling, there is an obvious solution to this, which is you clean a bloody room yourselves and see how long it takes. I have oh, never so cleaned a room in my life. I will, bloody <laughs> hell. You, you'll wait an awful long time before you see About bloody clean. time, Leon, then. I would like to see you clean a room. Yeah, that was fine. <laughs> so it passes the Alex Polizzi cleanliness test. Ouch. And her plan doesn't stop there. Tackling Natasha's shambolic approach to interior design is crucial. I'm sorry, darling, but some of your more extreme flights of fantasy have to be reined in. You started off, excuse my French, by cocking it up. She doesn't know the word budget, and I give it's driving me mad. Mad, 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 mad. Mad. I'd like to do a sample room for yeah. you. Yeah. Yes, please, yes. Spending between three and four thousand and show you what a huge difference it makes. Happily, yes. Alex's aim is to transform the unrefurbished room 18 on a small budget, giving Natasha a template for the rest of the castle. But even though the couple appear committed to improving the hotel and their skills as managers, the Ritzis once again leave Alex questioning their sincerity. We want to step back a little bit. We can't be here 24 hours a day. We calculated last night 93 days without a day off, without even an afternoon You'll off. get no sympathy from me. Mm. Wrong place to come for that, I'm sorry. I think you're going to have to grit your teeth and get through it, because I don't think you can find someone who will do what you need them to do until you can do it yourself. Mm. After a long day, Alex is beginning to lose faith in Natasha and Leon's attitude to change. With so much at stake, she hopes tomorrow's reality check can finally spur them into action. I'm so irritated, so frustrated with Natasha and Leon that I think it's better that I just give up for the night. I'm going to have another go tomorrow at trying to make them understand what this job entails.
Alex has one last chance to force the Ritzis into thinking like managers. They need to know what it's like for staff working under their regime and why their rooms get so many bad reviews. Leon, Natasha. Yes. It is time. Are you up for it, Leon? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Enthusiastic, as usual. In the past, Leon expected one housekeeper to turn over up to 13 rooms. Will this challenge demonstrate that he's been unrealistic and that the couple need to manage their staff better? OK, you've said to me that you can clean a room in 30 minutes. I think to do it properly is going to take two of you to do it in 30 minutes. So, Natasha and Leon, are you ready to clean this uh -huh. room? You yes. look yeah. very smart for a housekeeper, may I, know, I, I know. say? Are you yeah. ready, Gladiator? Yes. yes. Go. That Leon, to the loop. Christ, look at that, it's disgusting. Ugh. Uh. Come on, time is going out. Yeah? Cleaning the room has taken them over 30 minutes, but has the exercise created the psychological breakthrough Alex believes they need? I still think that for a professional person who's doing it on a daily basis, half an hour, it's Plenty. Two, I don't think it's so, plenty. No. For, for two people, easy. Well, they, then for why years, are your rooms done so badly? Because we need to come with them and, and to show them... When what they I get... found under that toilet yeah, should yeah. never have been there. And that's obviously yeah. months and months of no one yeah. just putting their finger up under and the rim. What the... matters to me is, is that someone is communicating yeah. to your staff yeah. what they should be doing. And I feel like these poor people are adrift on a sea of unknowing. From what I have seen, I don't think you've got another 18 months in you. It's not just the cleaning that's worn Leon out. He's still working round the clock because of the staff shortage and is uncertain about the way forward. I've been sucked into this business. It's like a great big black hole and I'm sort of swirling around right at the bottom of it now and I can't see a way out. Find Mr Evans. We're still hemorrhaging, bleeding from every poor money. We're here now, so we have to deal with it. But I can hear Russia calling me. It's always calling me back. To turn around the hotel, Alex has one final proposal in mind. The castle needs to regain its status as a source of local pride to attract local custom. But most importantly, are the owners' hearts still in it? The first thing I want to say to you is, you know, do you still want to do this? We've started now, so yes. yes. Next time I'm here, I would love to see this place with a bit more life in it, a few more people in it. I mean, you go down into town and there are people spending money. You know, you said you wanted to make this the heart of the community again, and somehow they have lost faith in this place. And we've got to get it back. Alex wants the castle to host a garden party that'll be the first in a series of events held just for local people. It'll be a major test, and understandably, Alex has doubts about the Ritzi's abilities. You know, I like you as people, but I have to tell you, you offend every hoteling instinct that I have. I'm horrified at your arrogance in thinking that you can do this with so little knowledge. Because if this was my hotel, I promise you, I would have a fucking nervous breakdown. Every time you turn around, there's a different problem. There's not mm. one thing that functions correctly as it should. Yeah. It's because we are used to it for past year, we don't... You know, and I think, you know, the rooms are a problem, the general cleanliness of the hotel is a problem, the way you talk to customers is a problem. You know, darling, you take your pick, lay your cards out on the table, pick your card. What, you know. what, what do we do? What, what, what well, concrete I've, steps we, we take? Well, and until some fairy comes down and brushes you with the hospitality dust, and you understand what the hell I'm talking about, I don't know what communication even we can have. At the moment, this isn't a hotel that I could recommend to anybody. I'm fighting with my hands behind the chair because I'm out of my depth here in the hotel business. Alex's criticisms have hit home. 
Natasha and Leon have so far failed to fix the issues surrounding the staff, the cleanliness and the refurbishment. With only two weeks to go before the garden party, Leon's feeling the pressure. We got sucked into doing the job. We just wanted to renovate the building and find a manager. I enjoy improving the place, but the hotel business by itself, there is no interest for me whatsoever at all. You have to be really wanting to help and please all the time, no matter what. And there are times when we just don't want to please and be helpful. I don't mind working, but uh, I don't want to work all the time and all my time is uh, consumed by this hotel. Changes are afoot at the castle of Brecon Hotel. Alex's team of designers have set to work transforming room 18, which in turn has transformed the spirits of Natasha and Leon. The couple have dragged themselves back from the brink and undertaken one last push. Basically, what she was saying was always right. She, she was always right. Good. Opened my eyes. The stretched castle staff have been reinforced, and at last the Ritzis have accepted their managerial shortcomings. And there's a new presence pacing the corridors. Natasha and Leon have pinned their hopes on one man. Noel Williams has 40 years of industry experience. Can this new manager sprinkle the hotel with the fairy dust of hospitality that it so desperately needs? This isn't a profession, it's, um, it's a way of life. And you, you don't not clock in and clock out. You, you go for it and you just enjoy doing what, what you do. Two months since our first visit, Alex is back in Brecon. This looks a lot better. It looks clean, it looks fresh, it looks positively inviting. Somebody has obviously waved their magic wand over the front. Today, the castle lowers its drawbridge for a hog roast garden party. The aim is to convince locals that the hotel deserves a place at the heart of the community once again. Hello. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. How's everything going? Um, Swimmingly, really well. I can't wait to meet your manager. Yes, oh, he's wonderful. And um, what about tonight? Are you ready for it? We've got the music, the pigs on. Um, I've got to go and get some more gas, but no, we're, we're, we're ready. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, somebody will turn up now. Do you mind if I go and introduce myself to Noel? Oh, please do. I'm sure he'll be delighted to meet you. All right, thank you. Thank you. No, See you bye -bye. later. Noel? Oh, hello, you must be Alex. Hi, lovely no, to, meet to meet you. you. So I'm assuming that you're the new broom. Well, you're trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly but surely. With a lot to prove, the new general has got all his troops well-dressed and drilled for their big day. On her first visit, Alex was astonished to find so few staff. So what will she make of the hotel's new recruits awaiting inspection? Here they are, the amassed ranks. I'm very glad to meet all of you, but I also wanted to say I think it's up to all of you who are going to become the core team to make this once again a beacon of good hoteling in this area. The Ritzis have obviously listened to Alex about staff, but given the brief to think minimal, has Natasha reined in her OTT and over-the-budget room refurbs? Oh, God. Look at this carpet. Oh, and the polyester bedspread and the wallpaper. They saw her coming a mile off. They'd been waiting 10 years to be able to sell this carpet. And finally, Natasha came along. It has become a very uncomfortable mixture of styles and designs. I mean, there's no headboard on the bed. Has she listened to a word I've said? There's no bedside lights. This room commits a crime against taste. It's quite unbelievable. I understand that the blue cushion is supposed to pick up on the blue glass in the wall, but really, it's just like putting a cherry on a turd. With that cherry setting the Ritzis back another £10,000, Alex's budget refit of room 18 has taken on even greater significance. 
She hopes that Natasha will use this affordably elegant vision as a more realistic template for the rest of the hotel. It's gone from a worn out, dingy bedroom to a spacious modern room with all the amenities expected by discerning guests. And the cheerless avocado bathroom has also been transformed. In its place is an inviting modern suite. Annex's easy to repeat refit has cost less than half of Natasha's typical spend and resulted in a room worthy of glowing reviews. Oh. Wow, what a change. Yeah. A bit of a change from how it yes. was before. Oh, it's Gosh. great. Yeah. We did it. All materials, all furniture cost about £3,000. Only £3,000? £3,000. Uh, no, when I'm going to do the bedrooms, I'll come here and I'll check. <laughs> you have have it. Have, it will be like my checklist. <laughs> I've got this, 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 this and that. Room 18 is a hit with the Ritzis. But with the crowds about to descend on the castle, can the new brigade conquer the hearts of the locals? Wow, it looks great out in here. I'm pleased, yes. <laughs> well yeah. done. Not for me, for our manager. <laughs> oh, I know, well done Noel then. Yes, well done Noel. Leon and Natasha seem to have done what I've asked them to do. There's plenty of people here, and Noel's got his staff well drilled. Dirty glasses appear, and they're whisked off a table, which is lovely to see. But the whole point of the party wasn't just to show guests a good time tonight. It's to make sure that we get them coming back again and again to get the locals involved with the Castle of Brecon. Experiencing a castle bristling with life has reignited Leon's entrepreneurial flame. And along with Noel, he's busy building bridges. Well, I've, I've been selling it to everyone as, you know, as hard as I can. Have you? Yes, yes, I have. Good. Um, I'm waiting to hear back on the, the Brecon grapevine about the feedback, you know, the words out that we, you know, things are changing up here. But what do the Brecon townsfolk actually think? Did you like the bedroom we did up for them? Yes, I did like the bedroom that you did up with them. It was very interesting to see the contrast between the room next door as well. well we've just been for a walk around the rooms upstairs and they're fabulous. They've accomplished a huge amount. It's moved forward in leaps and bounds. The sun sets over Brecon, and Alex is assured the castle has won back its valuable local support. All that remains is to have one last chat with Natasha and Leon. Yesterday worked brilliantly. You need to keep thinking about clever, innovative ideas of how to get people here, locals here. It's been a real eye-opener. One of the things I said to you when I first came to meet you was that I didn't think that you could employ a manager successfully until you'd learned how to be managers yourselves. Do you think that you've managed to achieve that to a certain degree? Oh, God, yes. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And it's a much happier place now as well. I don't have to be there all the time, so I have time for myself, for my children. And I'm really starting to feel proud of walking around here now. I'm, I'm thinking you walk in and you think, this is a lovely place. What will you have taken from this whole experience? This isn't about you. This is about your guests staying with you, and they come first. Gosh, Leon, I can't bloody believe it. We've actually kind of started making a hotel yeah. here out of you. I know, I almost shed a tear I then. I you're crazy, <laughs> no. And I wish you all luck for the future. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, thank you. I've often left Brecon feeling as if I've wasted my breath, but tonight I'm leaving with a real sense of achievement because I'm sure that the hotel is in a much better state now than it was when I first arrived. Perhaps, after all, there can be a happily ever after for the Castle of Brecon Hotel. <laughs>